Welcome back to the Own Your Awkward podcast. I'm your host, Andy Vargo, and every episode we get into what has made our guests vulnerable and how they've learned how to own their awkward in order to live their best life. Stay tuned so you can hear every awkward moment in today's show. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Own Your Awkward podcast. I'm your host, Andy Vargo, and today I'm really excited to have my really good friend, Doc Kennedy, here. Doc, how are you doing today? Great, Andy. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, What do you have exciting going on you want to tell people about right now? Well, the greatest thing on the planet, Andy. Only just the greatest thing on the planet, which Uh I was made aware that you're not even in tune with because you were shocked that I was sporting the Doc Kennedy Live, the, it, my podcast. It's my baby. Well, yeah. and my baby. I have a, two babies. So <laughs> <laughs> you got a, a real baby, and then real, your, and then your the, other baby. Yeah, and my wife would say, you know, babe, type thing. So mm-hmm. probably three babies. yeah, you've got a lot of affection going on in your life. That's exciting. Uh, there's a lot of love flowing through here. <laughs> so where can people find your show? Doc Kennedy Live dot com. Nice. Easy. Doc, Doc Kennedy and, yeah. and you'll hear a little bit probably coming up here about what kind of stuff you can hear on Doc's show. Yeah. Uh, so Doc and I know each other from being in the comedy scene here in the Northwest, which was a great time back when we could do live comedy. And then and, then, <laughs> and Doc said, I'm done with Washington and moved across country to to further life. So um yes. So, Doc, what, what's your awkward thing you've had to own in order to get to where you are today? Well, this is where half your viewers just click out. But <laughs> oh, uh-oh. I, I want to encourage you, before I say this, hang in there, because I think it's important that we, we have dialogue, that we have conversation. Mm-hmm. My awkward was admitting I was a Trump supporter. Oh. Are and this still listening? I uh, in 2016 this goes back okay uh that first election you know i'm in the comedy scene with you and i did everything i could to just kind of not make any of my intentions known uh i didn't feel the need mm-hmm. and i didn't think that it would be a huge deal uh regardless sure but So the election happens, Trump's in. I made a simple comment on Facebook, uh, just supporting Mm -hmm. an action that he took. And uh, some folks in the local comedy scene didn't take kindly to it. And they start, uh, there was people trying to get me kicked off shows and Mm. uh, calling me Nazi and all this stuff that really, uh, it hurt me, uh, to the point that I got physically sick. Wow. And that's no fun. You know, I, I didn't feel like I earned that obviously. <laughs> right. Well, when you're, when you're talking about getting basically blacklisted from shows yeah. for having a viewpoint, was that, I mean, how aggressive were you getting with people? Were you in their face? Were you being violent in places where people could, because I mean, it seems like to be to that level, you must've done something where you took an action that, said doc is dangerous well at this time uh 2016 there was this huge push to say that trump supporters were nazis Mm. that was kind of the lingo going around right so in hindsight if someone is fearful if someone uh really believes that someone could go to that level Mm -hmm. I, i don't blame them because they in my mind they were lied to and they believed it I see. They just saw me as a threat. It didn't matter if my intentions were good or not. They weren't going to see it. Hmm. I was just evil, period. So if someone sees you from that viewpoint, how possible is it to have a dialogue about the differences you have in opinion? Yeah, it's it's impossible hmm. because they've already made up their mind. They, they have, And we're seeing that now. They've already made up their mind. So... Got, you know, this, this I, I've really enjoyed sporting the hat. Mm-hmm. I'm in Nashville. You know, I'm in the city. 
uh, I've always had a piece of country in me because I, I was born in Montana and, and that's always been a kind of a part of my roots, mm -hmm. but you know, I'm not like, you know, some hillbilly up the street. Uh, so I put the hat on recently. I used to have it just sitting right in the backdrop and okay. uh, people on the show said, Hey, why don't you put the hat on? <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah, you know, no yeah, problem. It's a good look. You're, you're sporting it. Thanks. Yeah. And, and I enjoy it. Well, the comments that I've been getting, Andy, they have gone from, you know, like, I all I hear is, uh, you know, every slang that you would hear about some Southern hick. Hmm. And so but it's all based yeah, just off. Cause, yeah, just because you're wearing the hat. Yeah. That's all it took <laughs> to say. <laughs> Is uh you know this guy's an ignorant fool. Wow, that really does show how much we tend to relate image to to our opinions and our values. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So when you first, you know, I like to get in and really yeah. take apart people owning their awkward and kind of understand. So when you first put that out there, were you shocked or were you surprised by the level of of rejection you had? Oh yeah, yeah. It really. It shocked and it really hurt me. Uh, mm -hmm. When I talked about getting sick, uh, I developed vertigo through it. Oh, wow. And so it was a really rotten time and uh, a really, really hurtful thing that I experienced. Mm -hmm. they, didn't, well, you know, they didn't care about my feelings. Right. But, I, but what was going on in me, because I, I'm, it was a character attack. You know, I'm not racist. Mm -hmm. you know, I love people straight up. Well, and not, I, you know, so that, that, that label and I'm a history junkie. So I know exactly who the Nazis were. I'll tell you what, Andy, there's a lot of people now they throw that term around. They have no clue what the actual history of Nazi Germany is. Mm. Well, and how did that, because when we, when you look at the political scene right now and we're at, you know, at the end of 2020, coming up to a new year, there's been a lot of dialogue, a lot of slurs thrown back and forth in different directions. In 2016, it, it's hard to believe that it that it could have been a big shock because of what we've been living through the last four years. But but back then was more the beginning of the situation. So, it was. so the reason that I tried to hide it was twofold. Uh, number one, I didn't want my car being vandalized. And mm -hmm. I was in that happen, of course. Um, and then, uh, of course, I, I didn't want my uh, comedy career being impacted mm -hmm. negative, negatively. But that's what happened, you know. And so we talked about one in our awkward. You fast forward to 2020, 2019. I just took it straight up. Uh, I knew what was coming. And I'm just going to ride it out. And I've had the a similar experience in the national comedy scene mm -hmm. and that, i mean we haven't been doing hardly any shows anyway so that's yeah. been that, but. <laughs> well and politics are tricky because when you claim a side and you have yeah. to really decide based on your personality and your business uh -huh. if you want to involve that in it or not and if you if you claim a side then you now have the situation where you could potentially be alienating half of your audience yeah. Or more, depending on where you're at. Yeah. But on the flip side, buying have... in to audience. Exactly. Yeah. Have you found that your audience has grown because of the stand that you've taken? Yeah. Yeah, I have. And it's gone different. Uh, during this season, 2020, I haven't really been doing comedy. Mm -hmm. I've taken on uh, what I see as a, a war for the Republic and, and just running with it because. In my point of view, and you don't have to agree with me, nobody does, but my point of view, we're not going to have a stage to perform on if we lose our freedom of speech. Right. Yeah. Well, is, and that's, yeah, that's scary to me when I see the, um, the opportunity for censorship that's out there. Yeah. Because I've censored so hard on YouTube and, and it's been so frustrating because my channel should be in the thousands of subscribers. 
And I, I'm not being or anything. That's just how it should be right now. And it's in the hundreds and it, and it's plateaued. And I know that's not right because I keep cranking out stuff that when it's shared directly, you know, someone shares it to a person directly, mm -hmm. they love it. But actually finding it in a search has become extremely difficult. And so the censorship and what I, why I say it's a war is because the left is the one controlling who gets to be heard and who doesn't. And say what you will about Trump. I mean, if he's a dictator, I mean, he really sucks at it because he is pro First Amendment and pro Second Amendment, which. You know, well, and, yeah, true. and that that can be kind of the irony in the dialogue. Um, and when you look at things that are censored, it is scary, no matter which the, neither side should have so much control that nothing is being discussed. Yeah, the, the role of government should always be enforce the Constitution protect the citizens and stay out of the way. That's all anyone should want. Mm -hmm. in my it's not having food lines and having people backed up down the block be fed. That that's a dictatorship that is communism. And that's not what I'm signing up for. That's for sure. Right. You yeah. know, and so why I'm, I'm, I'm all in. Like <laughs> I'm not hiding any. <laughs> well, and you're that's, that's the thing. You're definitely owning your awkward in that regard, and and that's your show actually discusses these issues. Yeah, and yeah. that's I, I. You know, it's God, family, country, mm -hmm. and and I know there's a lot of people that can't believe that you could be a Trump supporter and a Christian, but that's my boat, and uh, I'm very big on hearing from God and prophecy. And so we talk a lot about that, too. How, what, what is God saying about what's going on in America right now? And really trying to bridge gaps, because it's not my desire to be at war with people. It's actually my desire to build bridges and see healing in our land. But sometimes it takes a fight to get to a point where people would be willing to listen. I, you know, we're going to go wherever is necessary but we prefer peace for sure. Well, and that's when you look at what you're doing with your conversation and you're trying to fill that gap. Are there tactics you have found that seem to work better with having a conversation or with bringing people into that middle space where, where ideas can be shared? Yeah. You'd be amazed at how many people just don't know the truth. Hey, if people are willing to listen, that's the biggest key. And that has on the individual. Are they willing to have a conversation? Are they willing to listen? And are they willing to adjust their opinion according to the facts? Yeah. And I think like when you bring up people being able to see the truth or understand it, there's, there's that documentary on Netflix with, I think it's a social experiment where they actually break down how some of those algorithms work. And it really highlights that even beyond the censorship that's out there, the, uh, the selective uh, sharing of what gets put in front of your feed, yep. I mean, that, that prohibits people from seeing the truth from either side. And so then here we are both, you know, you're both walking into a negotiation or a conversation without even the perspective that you should have of what's possible from the other side that could be positive. Yeah. Well, take Nashville, for instance, uh, when it comes to social media and uh, YouTube. We just had the biggest event happen on Christmas Day. Yeah. Uh, there was a bombing downtown. I should, because I've been talking about this, my channel should be clicking. It should be rolling. Mm. And it is at a trickle. Mm. It's not right, Andy. And this is part of the war. It's a, a war for freedom of speech. You know, I don't care if your opinion doesn't align with mine. It's only fair that we both get the same opportunity to share our thoughts. Mm -hmm. And this whole idea that, that words are violence, you know, that's straight out of, of you know, uh, Karl Marx 
type thinking. Well, and it, it's made to to try to silence truth. And when you when you talk about that, because there definitely is an idea that you know we don't want to be preaching violence necessarily. You know, we don't want to be encouraging people to be violent. For sure. But what is the difference between where you're saying that words aren't violent, where that's okay? Well, I'll tell you what, Andy, when I see, and I see this, when I see Antifa allowed to put together their riots through Twitter, they use Twitter to actually tell people where to go. Right, when yeah. Facebook does too. They allow them to do that. That to me is violence. When you're destroying a city, mm -hmm. you're actively burning down businesses that are not yours. You're burning down property that is not yours. That's violence. Mm -hmm. and versus saying, yeah. You know, and I understand right now that there's some folks on the on the right who are getting a little. They're they're pushing it, and I'm I'm not supporting that one bit. Right. If it comes down to a straight up fight, we'll have that when it's time. But tr just going out and, and starting chaos, that, that's not what I'm about. And I do believe that that type of stuff, Twitter, you know, they, and Facebook, they need to be held accountable because they have, I, if I'm one of those business owners, I'm suing the crap guys because they help make it possible. You know, it wasn't, uh, you know, what, 20 years ago, you went, it would be really hard to get everybody together at the same time. Sure. But now they they're able to plan to ahead by quite a ways. Yeah. 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 But then, and how do you then draw the line on what should and shouldn't be censored? Because clearly if, if those tweets are going out, it's all, it's all theoretically opinion as far as what is and is not valid. Yeah. So that's okay. But the president saying the election was rigged is not okay. You know, that that's right. insanity. Mm -hmm. You're telling certain people that it's okay to get together and burn down a city. And, but meanwhile, one person is not allowed to say, hey, I think there was some irregularities here. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's, that's, that's the type of, of uh, global global mm -hmm. overreach that I see. Well, that's always my uh, my fear when we get into situations like this, mm -hmm. is that who is the person who gets to decide what gets to go out? Yeah. And do I put all of my faith in that person's trust yeah. as an administrator at Twitter? Or Well, and even as I just said, what I, what I just said, in my mind, going, oh, crap, I shouldn't have said that because they're picking through what's being said here to decide if this should get a bigger reach. There goes, there goes my podcast views right yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Doc. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but but it, it is an important discussion because it because people I think the motive behind censoring things when when you believe that your viewpoint is right and you believe that the other side is damaging and harmful, I think that that where that that base idea of putting it in place comes from is for the most part with a lot of people from a good from a good value they want they're trying to be protective of the world yeah well and i but, think also that there's there's a real knowledge from the higher ups that people do actually learn through posts mm -hmm. you know there's this idea going around that nobody's ever changed through a facebook post that's not true mm -hmm. that's absolutely true because when the truth is presented People can are, are wise, you know, mm -hmm. for the most part. And they can decipher what's true and what's not. And if they decide to dig, they can. Yeah. Uh, you know, so. So, how, so you have obviously shifted from being not at all out there with how you feel to putting a show on about it and talking about it very openly. Yeah. How, how difficult was it to make that transition? Um, what did you run into as far as your own inner feelings to make that happen was it a i'm all in or yeah kind of take your time to step into it yeah because 2016 i i'd just been i saw what would happen if i stayed quiet <laughs> what mm -hmm. was the result of that <laughs> sure 
it was horrible. So I'm like, well, screw that. I'm, I'm in. It, it didn't take anything. And yeah, like I said, you know, there's a lot of folks in the local comedy scene, which I love the Nashville comedy scene. Mm-hmm. And I'll get to go back, you know, and, and we'll be back out and it won't be a big deal. But right now, as temperature is high, you know, it, it is kind of, and there's uh, one or two that are tied in with Antifa and all that. So, you know, I just kind of protect myself a little bit, but uh, and what has been difficult at all. You know, it's just been a desire to see uh, greatness in this land. And I know that people don't agree with the, with how I'm viewing that, but I'm not intimidated by them not agreeing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm not intimidated by them trying to shut me up. I do what I can, you know, and if that means I have to open five YouTube channels to try to push that out, then so be it. You know, we're, I guess what would, do you picture a world where there's no left or there's no, like, what is the, the end goal? Is it, is it conversation? Is it, is it one viewpoint? How do we get to that place? Well, the first thing is getting through this season and then it is conversation. And uh, I do believe that there's a large number of people, uh, you know, I don't believe that the results of, of things, I'll put it that way. <laughs> the results of things are what we have been led to believe by the mainstream media. Hmm. There, there was this huge shift in minorities voting on the right. And you don't even have to look at the presidential race to see that they were actually voting in their state and locals towards the right. So, you know, there, there was a big loss from the left. Uh, people are a lot more, they're waking up to reality, you know, and that's one of the favors that Twitter and Facebook actually did for us in allowing Antifa to gather and show their true colors because Antifa is nothing more than a tool from the left uh, and not every left, you know, there's, there's good Democrats still. There's good when, Democrats. Well, and know. I think that's one thing that regardless of which side you're on, uh-huh. when it, when it comes to campaigning, there becomes a kind of a poster child for each side. Sure. And that becomes hard if you don't line up with, with those values, but you may, you know, here's center and you might be kind of, in the middle of center sure. and not on the far right or left. <clears throat> and we're kind of sure. put in a situation where it's so polarized that you yeah. have to go all the way one way or the other. Yeah. Which is exactly what Biden had to do. Yeah. Which yeah. unfortunately that, go that ex- kills the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. And, but that's where we are, you know, and, and I'm owning that too, you know, that I'm not trying to pretend that we're not in that place. That's mm-hmm. exactly where we are. I I live in a part of the country where we had in 1864 battled Nashville uh, and the battle of Franklin. And in, uh, I believe it was 1862, uh, the stones river, which was a massive battle where over 10,000 people were killed. Hmm. And so I look around just my region and I see what civil war actually looks like. I see what the cost is. And I'm definitely Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. And I'm, I'm definitely in the peacemaker side of things. I don't want to fight. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think a lot of people want to fight. Some do, you know, some do. And I don't know that you can really, that's a hard one to change to. That's a hard, you know, cause it's, it's extreme on that side. Right. So how do you how do you step into it from a place of finding peace and conversation when you're stepping into that conversation? <laughs> Again, well, you know, it starts with someone willing to listen. Mm-hmm. Do you even want to have the conversation? Because if you don't, don't waste my time. Uh, you, you might as well talk to the wall because it's I've had I've tried to have those conversations, you know, and they're they're not worth it. You know, if someone's not willing to just hear, which a lot of times they're not right now, if they're not even willing to hear someone else's side, 
then don't waste your time. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times I look at, a lot of times I look at politics, like we're taking a trip to Disneyland from Seattle to LA or to, you know, from, from here to there. And there's 10 different ways you can get there. And we're all kind of aiming towards that same finish line where we want to have that happy place. We want people to be taken care of. We want society to be living well. We want, you know, it's a small world all day long, even though that song's going to get stuck in your head. However, we're having this argument about whether or not we should go down highway 101 and, and enjoy the coast along the way or take I-5 and do a straight shot or take a side trip through Vegas on the way there or just hop on a plane. And everybody is so determined that if we don't take our route, we will never get to Disneyland. And yet they all kind of end in the same destination at some point. So how do we kind of have that conversation along the way and, and, I guess what I'm getting to is, is finding that middle ground. And when we're starting a conversation with people, how do we find the, what are we, what are we united on? What, what do we have common yeah. agreement in and then yeah. branch out from there instead of starting with the conversation on the outside? Yeah. Well, like I said, with the hat, why are you assuming that I'd be mm-hmm. a, a certain stereotype that you've, you've decided exists by one piece, you know, uh, one right. hat, you know, this I've, I've come to learn is no different than a mega hat. Mm. And, you know, people are just ignorant in that. Mm. Yeah, it's too bad. I hate to say it, we are getting down to the last couple of minutes here. So what's a, a tip you'd leave our viewers with on and our listeners to for, uh, for how they can own their awkward? Well, if you're still with us, it's because you want to, you actually... Mm-hmm. You're not intimidated by conversation. You're not intimidated by different thoughts, different points of view. So be open with people. Just be honest. We don't have enough honest people right now. We have a lot of flaky people that are trying to uh, protect themselves and trying to just not get their feelings hurt and all this other stuff. Think long term. Just think long term. Andy, your analogy was good, but I do believe that there's some people who intend for us to break down in Death Valley and mm. leave. But never so, get there. <laughs> yeah. And kill us in the, in the process. Kill us off. There, there is a global desire to see the Republic, the United States of America, destroyed. Mm. So, yeah, think long term. What is worth it? What is not? And would, you're talking to your great grandkids, what will you be telling them the stories of 2020? Will they be that I stood up and fought for what was right? Or will it be that I didn't take it serious? Wow. All right. Well, yeah, you got to think about what that legacy is we're going to leave. So really appreciate that, Doc. I appreciate you opening up, owning your awkward. That's not always easy to do. (laughs) Well, some easier than others. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Doc, and be sure to check out Doc Kennedy Live for more of the more of Doc's message and, and story. And uh, thank you again for tuning in, and don't forget to own your awkward. Thank you so much for listening in for today's show. Be sure to visit awkwardcareer.com to continue your journey, and of course, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends so they can find their awkward side and learn how to own it.